My name is George Weiner. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of DoSomething.org. And I've been here six and a half, a little bit more years. And uh, during that time at DoSomething.org, uh, I've learned quite a bit and I've actually worked into my role as CTO. I started actually uh, as a, a fundraising associate. But that's, uh, I guess, for deeper into the conversation. Uh, I was attracted to do something that work, actually, because, uh, well, it's now become uh, the place where young people go to get engaged with large-scale social movements, find the causes that they're interested in, and take action around them. Uh, and currently, we're, uh, we're over a million members, and young people taking action last year, um, something around two million uh, young people took action uh, through Do Something That Work programs and campaigns that we run. These national campaigns are related to uh, a number of different causes. We work with national partners, and we get uh, sponsorship from uh, major Fortune 500 companies to run things like Teens for Genes, uh, a program uh, that raises genes for homeless teenagers across the country. Uh, Aeropostale is the sponsor on that. We pull in celebrities. And it's all about finding an easy idea for a young person to uh, get engaged with uh, a cause like teen homelessness, which affects one in three uh, homeless people under the age of 18, actually. And so raising genes for those teenagers and distributing them across the country raised over a million pairs of genes inside of three weeks. So again, oh, just wow. getting it uh, to an idea for a national cause campaign that doesn't require money, a car, or an adult, lowers the barriers to entry and makes sure that young people can uh, take action around any cause. The purpose of DoSomething.org uh, is to create a movement of young people that uh, find issues that they care about and then take action around them. So that's the purpose. Um, you know, you can draw from that whatever vision you may. Um, what does it mean when you get an entire generation, the largest since the baby boomer generation, a generation that's going to represent 40%, 45% of the voting population in a matter of years, by 2020 at the very least. This is uh, the generation that will be taking over and inheriting all of the problems uh, created by the past uh, with more social tools, uh, technological advancements than uh, mankind has ever seen before. Uh, you can draw a conclusion saying that, well, gosh, if do something has gotten an extra 2 million, 3 million, and counting people uh, who are just starting off uh, their sort of discovery into education to get engaged with causes greater than themselves, what is the impact of that? Not quite sure, but I'll tell you our purpose is generating that, that movement up front and getting them interested in as many different causes as possible so they can explore things first so that when it's time to enter the job world, whether or not you're working for a not-for-profit or a Fortune 500 or a bank simply trying to make more money for, you know, mm -hmm. making rich people more money, mm -hmm. you can have deep-seated in your mind, well, I should be giving back because at one time I donated my genes to a homeless teenager in Texas. What are some of the issues, I guess, that makes Do Something want to position itself to help that generation? Like, why did you choose the millennial generation? I know you touched upon the impact we're going to make in the future, but were there some inherent issues or flaws or things you wanted to change specifically? Every nonprofit usually has something they want to change or like something they think is worth working on. Yeah, apathy sucks. We want to change that. Okay. And this generation is more apathetic than Absolutely not. Other. It's not the assumption there. We saw uh, an opportunity and a need in a market. And just like any for-profit company, we jumped on it. And the opportunity was there was nobody making it easy and accessible for uh, large amounts of young people to take action around causes. Uh, again, beyond just the donate $5, which I'll be honest is a shitty volunteer experience. Mm -hmm. God awful way to getting involved with a cause. No offense to the people that then sign you up for direct right. mail that shows up in your mailbox. That is not social action. Right. That's not a way to engage a teenager. And that's prior to really what Do Something started doing. Do Something realized that the internet was coming. We started in 1993 by Andrew Shu. And the whole goal of it, and arguably still is, is to you know make community service, a word that is actually banned here, but make community <laughs> service as cool as sports and celebrity. Make it, accept, uh, make it accessible and mainstream. Everybody is in sales. Mm -hmm. And it's like yeah. a cliche to say that, but it's absolutely true, whether or not it's technology or obvious fundraising, mm -hmm. but you're selling an idea, you're making people understand why you're choosing a certain approach, and it's actually more powerful. And I feel, you know, actually sorry for organizations that are leaving 
uh, technology off the table when you're talking about uh, selling a foundation or a sponsor. Actually, some of the biggest funders we got uh, last year involved bringing in the tech team and our tech plans, saying this is how this is going to scale. It's exciting now to, to bring in your, your geek. So don't leave your geek in the closet. Let yeah. that guy or girl out. Yeah. Uh, because it can be used in fundraising. Uh, getting back to my trajectory when mm -hmm. I was uh, applying, I mean, I looked for eight months for a not-for-profit that fit my uh, certain needs and do something really was uh, something that got me excited. I applied and uh, I applied for actually a PR position because that was the only thing open and immediately uh, Nancy mm. Lublin, our CEO, former founder, dress for success. Yeah said, you don't know the first thing about PR, and she was absolutely right, uh, but said, uh, <laughs> you seem smart enough, you're in fundraising now. I was like, cool. So day one, I changed my first job. Went from uh, there uh, in a series of positions up to CTO, but the reason I chose that trajectory, um, and the great thing about doing something that let me go that way, is because I realized that technology really would guide the ultimate success of this organization, mm. and at the time, I'd come up with ideas and realize they could never be implemented unless I understood the technology. And so I uh, effectively went back to school. Uh, every day when I'd go home, I'd pick up a new book. So you didn't know tech? Nothing. I had no clue. I mean, I graduated wow. UPenn, Poli Sci, Environmental Studies, double major. Um, I didn't know HTML. So, you know, I started with learning basic web programming languages, uh, database structures. Uh, then sort of digital marketing and so every uh, every layer of the stack I had to teach myself at night mm. and learn as I went along and so I went from there to, to content to marketing to director of technology then to CTO uh, mm. as I taught myself all of the, the different layers uh, we now have a team of I guess it's 11 folks two of them are part-time like when you said you were looking for a nonprofit job. One, like, why? Um, and two, your motivations for actually working so hard to pick up a topic that really you didn't have any basis in, like for this organization specifically. So there must be some draw there. So two part question. Yeah. So the uh, I guess the the reason technology is that uh, I could see that leveraging technology could maximize our impact mm -hmm. as you know the the ultimate lever, really, to, to get to the scale that we wanted to get after. Um, I found it exciting, and I think any time that you come across a topic where work feels like play, mm -hmm. you're spending your time pretty wisely, and I think that's one of the biggest uh, failings of our education system in general and the way it's laid out. Mm -hmm. It's not fun, it's not self-directed, and it actually beats the desire to learn out of you with a heavy blunt stick mm -hmm. until the point where you look at a book and you're like, oh gosh, that's for school. Right. And that makes me sad. So it's really the, it just happened to be technology for me where I like love obsessing over web analytics. I love obsessing over uh, what's the newest uh, mobile tech and strategic thinking around the mm. merging of social psychology and UX. I think those are super interesting things, and I love watching, you know, small things like changing the form on the front of your site, mm -hmm. increase a yield practice. by a hundred percent, and suddenly that's um, X number of people that you can engage in your cause that you otherwise wouldn't. Have. Uh, I realized, I think early on, that I didn't want to end up in a job that makes rich people more money, mm -hmm. and if you do the math, that really narrows it down. I wanted to be excited. What did you consider? Uh, well, look, it, that immediately rules out pretty much banking. And, and law. And law. Well, When you look at most corporate firms where my friends went to, okay, I'm yes. sorry, Cadwallader, uh, not really, you know, not really doing it for me. I don't care how many pro bono cases you pick up on the side. Right. Uh, but that was only a personal decision, and fortunately there was a, a site called idealist.org mm -hmm. that made me realize that it was actually a career track out there. And not just something that you can do on the side that you can make a true, um, a true career out of the not for profit sector. Yeah. Were you at some point as a child motivated, and inspired? You know, I think I remember as far back as I've been told by my mom that like age 
somewhere between eight and ten, I made this realization. Um, but my original dream job was inventor. I wanted to create things. But uh, I think that merged into this sort of idea that I didn't want to do a certain type of job. And then continued through high school where I did, uh, you know, tons of volunteering. Hmm. And then when I realized it could be an actual like job pursuit, I was like, this is what I like doing. Why would I, you know, take the, uh, you know, the LSAT? Mm -hmm. Or why would I go after, you know, business school? if this is what I care about.